When Kraft bought Cadbury's for 19.5 billion US dollars, what did they really buy? The people, the recipes, the factories, the chocolate? Well, none of those. They actually bought a brand. Welcome to Tomorrow's World. I'm your host, Aina Sarkar. Today we will explore brandless from out here in San Francisco Presidio. Just follow me. What's in a brand is something that many will ask once they click on brandless, an e-commerce portal that has the potential to disrupt the huge grocery industry in North America. Launched in July of 2017, Brandless has already made a name by selling your everyday essentials for just $3. Packaged simply just with the name of the product and the ingredients. Brandless promises to sell high quality organic goods without the brand tax. The company is founded by Tina Sharkey and Ido Leffler. Tina, it is really ambitious. You're fighting some big giants over here. Now, all successful companies are actually solving a fundamental problem. What was the problem that you identified and what is it that you're actually trying to solve? The problem that we're trying to solve at the highest level, you know, what is that meta kind of problem, is the idea that we're democratizing access to goodness. That people want, need, and would love to have organics and non-GMO and gluten-free and all these incredible products for themselves and their families, but they can't always afford it. So we're trying to debunk the idea that value, price and affordability, and the values that you want for yourself and for your family can't live together because they can. How did you think about doing that? Where did it start? My co-founder, Ido Leffler, and I, when we were starting Brandless, we had this idea that everyone deserves better and that if people truly understood what things cost versus what they're paying for them, and we said, you know what, better doesn't need to cost more, and we can actually put the soul into a company that believes that everyone deserves better, and we can build a company for profit and for purpose on day one. How did you start? What was the first thing you did? The first thing we did is we found each other. Mm -hmm. And as co-founders in Silicon Valley at this moment, it was really about who has a shared spirit? Who do I want to build something with? And when Ido and I had met, our families lived in the same town and we knew each other and I really admired his work. I love what he was doing. He was a fan of what I was doing. We were both doing other things at the time. And we said, one day we have to start a company together. What is the size of the market that you're choosing? If you think about the CPG market, the consumer packaged goods market, that market, if you add in like the Costco's and the large clubs and all the stores, online, offline, etc., you're talking about like a $2 trillion market just in the US alone. How are you building that trust? How are you making them trust you with your product? Well, Brandless is built on the principle that we put people first, and we're building a community where values, gluten-free, non-GMO, organic, um, cruelty-free, uh, tree-free, um, sulfate-free, phthalate-free, whatever, just what matters by product, and value, price, the quality and value, your dietary restrictions, the way you want to live your life can actually live together and that it's better stuff for fewer dollars and so we're asking people to join that community and to share with each other and to share with others um, what their experience has been and to try it. Um, you know, so for many people, they could never find these things because on the first week of our launch in July, after 60 hours of being live, we had already shipped to 48 states in the US. And so with that, with no market, like nothing. Um, and that's incredible. And so what we couldn't believe in that first week was that the thing that telegraphed, the things that people heard and they saw was they could actually afford it. That they were in being invited in to have something that they didn't, one, they couldn't find because of where they lived, so they didn't have access, or two, they couldn't afford because the pricing was so um, out of control. And so then every time we're launching new products, we're launching the products that our community wants. When we do product creation, when we do product development, we're doing it now in step with our community. We're kind of co-creating with them. They're asking us what they're looking for and we're trying to meet those demands. 
Well, what is the vision going forward? Uh, where do you see this company in the next five or 10 years? The exciting thing about the brandless movement is that whilst we're starting with like everyday essentials and beauty and pantry and snacks and staples, um, we can imagine a world where brand tax can be taken out of so many things today that you shouldn't have to pay more for. And so looking at the areas that the consumers and people really want and deserve that are laden with inefficiencies and saying, could there be the brandless of X? And when you come back in a few years and ask us what we're doing, you won't believe how many new categories we've created. Well, I'm excited actually. I tasted You're one of the, about the I, I think I cannot stop at one. There used to be an ad that said that you try stopping at one and this literally means that I think I finished almost half a bag. Oh my gosh. Well, you have no idea. I'm this totally is obsessed addictive. with the What else yeah. does it have? Mm. It's something. And so good. Um, do you believe that these are gluten and dairy free? Mm hmm non-gmo but they're jalapenos so they have a nice bite i don't care about anything as it tastes great it tastes great <laughs> but it's awesome and if you like spicy mm -hmm. people say what are some of my favorite products mm -hmm. this is the arbiata pasta sauce so we mm -hmm. have three organic tomato sauces mm -hmm. a tomato and basil a garlic and the arbiata mm -hmm. this one is the spiciest one mm -hmm. And I love it. I mean, mm -hmm. if you like spice, but if you're not a big spice person, the organic tomato and basil is also fantastic. And this is... Oh, uh, this is organic peanut butter. Uh, peanut butter. It's so good. And what people, it's so interesting that they don't realize that organic peanut butter, you have to stir. Mm -hmm. So when they compare us to things that are made from chemicals, um, you don't have to stir because the chemicals are holding it together. Mm -hmm. But this is actually the most delicious peanut butter. And wow. I put this on our quinoa chips. I have to give you the quinoa chips because they hold it really nicely. And then some organic jam on the top. Mm. Oh, Beyond. So good. so good. I can't wait to taste it. Don't worry. I'm sending you home with like, <laughs> okay. a lot of them. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. So and I'm much fun always excited about women entrepreneurs Thank because you. I think they have the right ingredient of what it takes to be successful, practical, mom. It, you cannot go wrong. So, so I'm excited about the company, excited about the products. And whatever I've seen and tasted, it's delicious. So you must try it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Located in the historic Presidio, next to the Golden Gate Bridge near San Francisco, the office has an in-house store that displays their organic products from non-perishable food, beauty, health, personal care products, cleaning, and office supplies. All of the products are sourced carefully from around the world by Chief Merchant Rachel Vegas and her team in Minneapolis. Previously to Brandless, Rachel worked in Target and supervised the center grocery store's business. Rachel, everything is $3. How do you manage to keep everything at the $3 mark? It was really important to us that we offer fair, fair prices for better product. And if customers knew how much it really costs to make all this product, they'd be riding in the streets based on how much they have to pay. And so for us, it was really a matter of simplicity. We want everybody to know that it's all $3, unless it's two for three or three for three, but that we have really tried to make better product accessible to everybody in this country. How do you maintain quality and how do you source the perfect quality for that price? Most times when people think about a single price point or a low price point, they think price first and they think it's generic so that they haven't led with quality. In our case, we start with quality. We start with really high product standards that are customized to every category. What do people care about in food? They care that the product is all non-GMO. Most of our food is organic. We start with the highest quality ingredients and we formulate recipes that we know our customers will love. In beauty, we know that there's about 400 ingredients out there that people consider to be harmful to them or that may be potentially harmful to them. And so we've taken them out of all of our products. So we start with quality first and then we move to price. And that simplicity of price helps people understand what our value proposition is. 
Well, let's talk a little bit about your journey. So this must have been quite extensive that you had to go and find the right product for the right price with the right quality. Let's start from how did you go about it? What was the first thing you did? I was one of the first employees and the very first thing I did was think about what is the product we want to carry? What are people looking for in their homes? What is hard to find? What is unreasonably priced? What we call that brand tax. And so what is the assortment that really people should be able to, we put people first and we've said that over and over again. And so what are those things that people should be able to get and a fair price for better product quality? The second thing I did was work to define our product standards. As I mentioned, they're different in food, from beauty, from cleaning, from hard goods. And we wanted to make sure they match the expectations consumers have in each of those categories. And then I went looking all over the world, not just all over the country, for the best possible partners to help us bring this product to life. Well, $3 sounds too good to be true for some of the products that you just mentioned. Um, were there any compromises? What did you have to compromise to get to that level? Very few. We didn't compromise ever on quality, ever. In fact, if we felt like we were compromising, we just waited till we found the right partner, the right timing, the right way to launch a product because we would never compromise on quality. Um, that is number one, what we lean forward with. We start absolutely with what we try to stand for and bring that product to our customers' homes. And when, when you see gaps in our assortment, things like, oh, I wish Brandless had that, chances are we wish we did too and it's either in the works or we haven't found the exact right way to bring it to market. Well, let's talk about specifically some of your products. Let's see the products that come from India, let's say. You know, we are South Asian. Our viewers are going to be South Asians as well. So we are proud of things that are made in India that comes over here. Um, walk me through some of the experiences that you faced, uh, specifically, let's say, with an Indian manufacturer and sourcing it, and how were you pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised? Absolutely pleasantly surprised, although I wouldn't say surprised. Um, I certainly have, an have had experiences uh, sourcing from India in the past, and we found that the standards of quality are very high, the uh, standards of service and communication are very high, and that it was very easy to work with our manufacturing partners there to make sure that we were aligned on what is the product that we want to deliver, in what form. Uh, one of the things that I was most proud of is our two-pack hand towel, dish towel that we have in our assortment. You can see some of them over here even. Those items have that beautiful bow tie on them because of our partner there who suggested it. We wanted to be able to sell two. When we sell two of other things on our site, the people in our distribution center pick one and then pick another and pack it in a box. But in this case, two for three comes perfectly tied together in a really beautiful way. And I think our partners have been really great at finding those solutions and helping us meet our customers' needs. Well, you have huge potential, right? Anybody and everybody can buy your product, right. uh, particularly at the price and the quality that you're talking about. Um, how do you plan to scale up to serve anybody and everybody. We have really audacious plans to be able to touch more people in this country and to be able to um, meet their needs and listen to them about what more assortment than they want. And we will scale. We will scale with marketing and we will scale with social media um, and we will invest in getting to know more consumers out there who want to meet us. But one of our best tools is the communities that we're already talking to. The ability for them to share that they found us and that we meet those needs and to create that viral effect. Um, we've seen it happen within social communities. I mentioned the vegan community and the gluten-free community. They're probably two of our biggest fans when it comes to sharing, hey, if you also want to observe a vegan diet, have you found Brandless? And it's amazing how quickly um, that builds our base. How did you build trust with this community? We're still doing it. We absolutely are still doing it, but I think the, the bit best way to build trust is first through transparency. Here's the product we have. We allow you to search our site through those values that you care most about, and we'll continue to expand what those values are. But today, you can click on vegan and see what our total assortment is. And you can read on our site more about the product, and we'll continue to expand that information. The questions that customers are asking us give us ideas on what answers we should have and add to our site so they can do the research themselves as well. well thank you so much. I wish you good luck. And I'm hoping that my house will be at least 10% filled with 
the brandless stuff now. <laughs> I hope your house will be 50% filled with brandless, but we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. With a total funding of 50 million from investors like Redpoint Ventures, Cowboy Ventures, Google Ventures, Slow Ventures, and Sherpa Ventures in Series A and B, Brandless is also giving back to the community by partnering with Feeding America and donating a meal to people facing hunger every time someone shops at their online store. The San Francisco startup has a young group of thinkers who call themselves eaters, doers, and lovers of life changing the world. Lindsay, you moved here from DC to join a startup after you graduated. What part of Brandless vision did you buy into? What, what is it that attracted you the most? It's interesting. At the time that I joined Brandless, um, there was really not a lot of information out about it. It was still very much in stealth mode. Um, and I didn't know a lot about the company as a whole. But what really compelled me was, was the culture. I sat in a room with our general manager during my interview and he told me that what he needed from his employees was to be fearless. He needed people who weren't going to have ego, who wanted to try things, to fail, to iterate, get feedback and do better and move a company forward. And that sort of ethos of being fearless and taking the leap every day was incredibly attractive to me. And I think I was also incredibly compelled by the fact that Brandless gives back. I think that it's a new exciting wave of business, a new consumer trend that businesses are really stepping up to give back to their communities and to encourage the people who shop with them to do the same. So you're one of the early employees, right? In this short, long tenure with Brandless, um, what have you learned about the consumer market and what drives it? I think that the thing that I've learned the most um, throughout my time here and, and kind of working for the company before launch and now that we actually have launched is this idea of authentic messaging. I think that there's a strong desire for brands to be trusted again. I think consumers are losing faith in their brands even though they interact with them so often. Um, and there's this feeling that there's a one-to-many messaging. You feel like you're sort of getting this blanket messaging from everyone. Um, and I think that what Brandless does really well is getting in direct conversation with the consumer. It feels one-to-one, -one. it feels intimate. It feels like you're talking to a friend, um, not like a bigger company. And I think that our team has done a really great job in staying really in touch with the consumer. And I think that that has really spoken volumes in in our reach and how people have perceived us. When you mention consumers, you're actually collecting a lot of data on the search engine and all of that, and you're profiling them. What do you plan to do with that data? How, what, what, how, do you, uh, how are you putting that to use? I think it's interesting, you know, as companies collect data to, to give better recommendations and to customize things for their audience so that people are getting truly the content and the recommendations that they're looking for. Um, I think that it's interesting to see the way that different people are brought into Brandless. There's so many facets of our messaging, whether it's the quality of product or the low price point or the simplicity of packaging or um, the fact that it gets delivered right to your doorstep or the give back. There's all of those components in addition to everything that we sell. So we sell across so many different kinds of aisles. We're not just one kind of company. It's amazing to see how even amongst a group of people who love Brandless, who follow similar patterns or demographics, we're all brought to Brandless for completely different reasons. So for right now, we're just sort of learning, letting people kind of come to us in the ways that they do, um, and hoping that we can give them better and better suggestions for what they'll want and the content they want to see in the future. So the website is quite pivotal to this whole experience, right? Now, how are you making it user-friendly and how are you making it intuitive? How are you giving everyone the same experience as opposed to any other bigger website? Absolutely. I think that the root of it is simplicity. I think uh, what's interesting is that Brandless is consumer packaged goods by industry, but it's sort of lifestyle by attitude. Um, we like to curate this idea of a really simple life where you don't have to kind of sort through 48 different kinds of ketchup to find just the most simple thing that you're looking for that's better for you at a price point that makes sense. So the key is simplicity. When you go to our site, like I said, there's not 80 different kinds of salad dressing across you know, 20 different brands. We have four that we think will meet sort of your key basic 
um, needs in addition to some fun new flavors that we're working with. Um, I think that our shopability in that way is really exciting. I also think the fact that we allow you to shop by values. So at the top it says gluten-free, vegan, kosher, um, a few other things that you can click and it'll immediately sort our entire site just for those things. I have friends who are celiac or um, I know people that are really trying to stay kosher and it really helps them to kind of have this immediate filter out and they can shop by their values and still get the best stuff. Now you're at a startup, right? Yes. I mean, there it comes with a lot of baggages, challenges, frustrations, getting to market and all of those. How do you handle it? I think that's a, a great question. And I think that nothing could ever prepare you for, for startup life except for being in the middle of one, sort of in the busiest times. And things change a lot. I think um, what's really exciting is that you can say, no two days are the same. And I think that's both invigorating and exhausting. You really never hit a routine because everything's constantly changing. Your role and your job are changing. The needs of the company are changing. The way the company interacts with other people is changing. And that's amazing because you don't kind of get into a rut, but at the same time, it's a little difficult to develop routine. So, I mean, the way to combat that is by staying flexible, raising your hand when you need help, and knowing that you have a team that'll really support you and catch you when it all feels like too much. I think that I felt very lucky in finding that here at Brainless. So do you remember one of your aha moments in the company that you really cherish? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was, um, as I mentioned, I started with Brainless in July of 2016. So it was almost exactly a year uh, after joining that we launched. And so it was, uh, really fascinating being so close to a stealth company for a full year and then finally being live out to the world in such a big and exciting way with the way that our launch was. Getting to see the reaction of people to our company, you know, people who haven't been working internally here, was truly amazing. Um, the fact that in such a short period of time we made sales to everywhere we could ship, 48 states plus DC, and that we were getting tons and tons of, of consumer feedback um, about how much they loved us and what we were doing and how lots of parts of our message were resonating with people. And the fact that people really got brandless without having ever worked here or stepped inside our world was um, really amazing, seeing that we really are creating better everything for everyone. Well, I'm sure there'll be a lot more aha moments coming up. I hope so. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thank you. Well, Brandless is an ambitious company with a lot of promises. We'll have to wait and see as to how they deliver the $3 price tag in all these variety of products. We'll see you next week, same time, same place, for another exciting episode of Tomorrow's World. Until then, take care of yourself. This is Aina Sarkar signing off now.